All right, this is gonna be a review of the Slumberjack Bounty 2.0 pack. So, very nice pack bag, something I've been wanting to review. I had a friend come to me, he was looking for a pack that he could buy to take to the Boundary Waters in Northern Minnesota and still hunt out west with. And his budget was less than $300. So I've not run this pack before. I'm not affiliated with Slumberjack in any way. I do have some other equipment and I really like it. But based on the reviews and just what I've seen of this pack, I decided that uh, this would be my recommendation. He picked up the pack and now I get a chance to review it. So again, very nice pack. Uh, he got a discount on it because he's in law enforcement, but even without that discount, you can generally find these online for about 200 to $225. I checked yesterday, Amazon has these right now for $225 with free shipping. So I did not pack up this pack. This pack has a ton of features compared to a lot of bags that I review. And because of that, I did not want this video to get extremely long. I tried to keep them all less than 30 minutes. We'll see how I do here. But if you're wondering what you can get in a pack this size, I have a couple other videos up with Kuyu bags you can look at. So Slumberjack says the main bag here is about 4,500 cubic inches, and this day pack is about 500. That gives you a total internal capacity of 5,000 cubic inches. For me, that's going to be more than enough for a seven-day hunt. So excellent size, that four to 5,000 is about perfect, in my opinion, for the vast majority of people hunting up to a week. So a lot of features on this bag to touch on. We're going to start with this detachable day pack. So this clips in here with just four clips, top, bo or top bottom, top, bottom. Uh, they do note that you can use this to shoot off, so you lay the pack flat. If there's stuff in here, you can stick your rifle right between these two pockets, especially if the bag is partially full, and they say that's a good rifle rest, and they're 100% correct. That is a very nice rifle rest if you like shooting across a pack. So features of this day pack, obviously it's just the four buckles. It's quickly removed. You've got two front pockets. Each has a little bit of separate storage in here. Hopefully you can see that, just a couple of little pockets there. And this one has one divider in there. So just a big pocket with one little divider to stash stuff behind. Opening up the main bag here, or the main day pack, you have one pocket inside of here and that's gonna be for a hydration bladder. So got a bladder sleeve that's going to be apple for a three liter bladder no problem and then you have your pass through here for your bladder hose so very nice design little day pack it does add some weight but the nice thing about something like this is you can choose to leave it behind if you don't want it or need it uh, these are straps that pull out they attach to the bottom of the bag so you wear this just like a little bitty backpack and again, this is a very nice design. It's a very nice touch, especially for the price of this bag. So very adequate. You can get your water in here, kill kit, some snacks. And if you want to hike light, you can take this and you can head off across the mountains with it with everything you need to get through the day. So moving on to the main bag here, again, about 4,500 cubic inches. Slumberjack has put a lot of thought into these bags. They've done a lot of really nice things with them. Uh, you have no external pockets on the front of the bag or the top. There's no zip compartment or anything up here. So no pockets there. All your pocketing on this bag is going to be on the sides. So sides here, you have three straps per side, which is excellent. I wish every pack maker would use three straps. A lot of them use two. I find that rather annoying. You get a lot better control with three straps and a lot more ability to suspend a load in there if you need to. So... These straps run up off this frame. They go through these sewn-on loops, which attach to the bag itself, and then they buckle. So on this side, this one runs above this side pocket. Your second strap down here can either run behind it, like it is now. So if you don't want to compress whatever's in there, you can run it behind, or you can run it over the top. And your third one down runs between these two side pockets. So. Again, I didn't fill the bag because they didn't want this video to get extremely long with me just unpacking stuff. This pocket, ample size for Nalgene. You could get a jet boil in here and very well sized for stuff like that. Uh, with the Nalgene in there, you can also get some additional stuff in there. This one's a little smaller. You can get a kill kit in here, at least a smallish kill kit. 
Uh, also adequate for just other things if you have a really light pair of rain pants or something like that. This would also fit like a totes, totes cup with a stove in it and things like that. So again, this side you have the two pockets. Behind these pockets you have this open stash area like the Exos pack have. So you can get a tripod in here, trekking poles. As you can see, that's down to my elbow. So it goes all the way down to the bottom of the pockets. You can fold these pockets out if you have something big in there, or you can cinch them down. So a nice design feature there. I like that. Some of these straps are not through the loops just because I'm sloppy, and this is actually take two on the video. So I threw it back together quickly. All right, hip belt pockets. So this side, you've got just a standard hip belt pocket. It kind of zips and unzips one-handed, depending on the angle, um, which is nice for a pack of this price. You can get a cell phone in here and an external charger, at least a reasonable sized one, which is what I generally like to run in my hip belt pockets. So moving on to the other side of the pack here. Again, three compression straps here. You've got one up above the pocket. You've got one you can run underneath this pocket that comes out here, or again, you can run it over the top of the pocket to compress the pocket itself down. And then you've got one that runs over the top about a third of the way up from the bottom of the pocket. So Slumberjack refers to this as a spotting scope pocket. This is a very adequate spotting scope pocket. There ain't a lot of volume here. I have a 65 millimeter spotter that fits in there without any issue. An 85, in my opinion, will fit without any issue. Anything bigger than that, you might have to try out. And this also has that stash area between the pocket and the main bag. Again, you could float the top out a little bit if you need to with that additional strap. So pocketing on the outside, that about covers it. The hip belt here has molly, so you can attach a holster, uh, a holder for water or anything else, which is nice. If I'm in bear country, I'm generally going to run a handgun on that side. So moving on to the main bag here, you've got a horseshoe zip. Comes down about two-thirds of the way, which is really nice. So all the packs I currently run have that. They just really like being able to get into my main bag and grabbing what I want out of there without having to dig everything out. The only pocketing here inside the main bag is a water bottle sleeve. So this one does have some hangers. They seem a little bit weak in my opinion, but I think he's had a bladder in here so far it's worked for him. And that again will hold up to a three liter bladder. You have a very large volume inside this main bag. Again, 4,500 cubic inches is a lot of volume. It's gonna be more than anybody should need for a day hunt, no matter what the season. And that should be adequate to get you through that seven-ish day hunt. So really like the horseshoe zip. So this bag does separate from the frame, like a lot of the higher end packs. And you can haul meat with the bag on, you can haul meat just on the frame, or you can haul meat on the frame with this little guy attached, which is a really nice touch. So on the bottom of the bag here, instead of having two traditional straps that come up, you have this load shelf that comes up around the bag and clips in here. So that works okay. The issue I have with that is there's no way to attach the bottom of the bag to the frame itself that I could find. So when you undo this, this just kind of flops here. You've got the three straps on each side for compression straps that hold it on, but there's nothing actually tensioning the bag down on the frame like you'll find on a lot of other packs. So even with these clipped and tightened all the way down, you can see there's just, there's some slop here and this moves around. So the first thing I would like to see them do is add something down here, maybe behind the bag or something that would simply tension this bag down to the frame. So I've not had any problems with the bag coming off the frame, but it is something that I question as far as whether or not that would be an issue in the long run. All right, so moving on, if you wanna separate the bag from the frame, again, you undo these two buckles on the bottom for the load shelf. You come to your three side straps here. You pull them back through these sewn in loops that kind of keep them where they should be. So, three on this side, and then we do the same thing here, take these three out from the sewn in loops, and 
And the last thing we need to do to get the bag off the frame, and the best way I found to get meat in there by far is to completely take this bag off. So we're gonna undo these two load lifters. Just pull them right back through the buckles. And that's that. So this just slides over the top of the frame, which is similar to a lot of other designs. So if you get these top load lifter buckles, and out of the way, this bag just slides right off the frame. So now we're left with a freighter frame or a hauling frame, all right? You run these buckles up. And again, very nice feature. I'm glad they included that. That's a nice touch on a bag of this price range. And then if you want to now, you can also run it like this. So if you're just day hunting, I would run it with just this day pack on here and with that load carrier system up like it is there. Okay, so I learned something. I stand corrected. These do not work. That'll buckle in there, but not on the other side. So kind of a miss there, I guess. I was hoping that would buckle in there. I did just tried that one side earlier and thought it would, but it appears that it won't. You could still strap across it if you wanted to run just the day pack on here and hunt with it like that, I guess you would probably get it down in here. That would work fine to carry what you need, but I was hoping that would strap in. <coughs> so, hauling meat down here has worked fairly well. Again, I've had 85 pounds on here. That's kind of my go-to weight when I'm testing out new things. I did find out again, I tried different ways and by far the best way to get this set up to haul meat is to take this bag completely off of here. So once that's off, obviously you're gonna lay this flat. I'm not for the purpose of this video, but you would lay that flat. You would get your meat on here. You would do these two straps up. And at that point I found what works best for me is to just take this bag, lay it on top and just put the buckles back on. So again, simulating this is laying down on the floor. I just take this bag and I'm just gonna strap it right back on. That worked very well for me. I put on quite a few miles with this setup with two bags of 40 pound softener salt and some miscellaneous gear. I'm off, there we go. All right, so that's the best way I found to haul meat with this and that worked very well for me. Again, get that load sling set up first with your meat in there, obviously laying down. I'm just gonna strap this back on like that, just attaching the buckles on both sides and then you're gonna really cinch these side buckles down. So when I test bags out, it's kind of ridiculous, but one of the things I do to test them is I go out to my garden and I start gardening, I got about a half acre of gourds out back. So I kneel down, I stand up, I squat down, I bend over, I move around, I'll walk out to the grass. I'll squat down, tip over backwards, roll over and stand up. And I do that a couple times, 20 to 30 minutes at a time with between 40 and 80 pounds of my packs. That gives me a good idea of what's gonna move, what's gonna break. And with this bag, I had absolutely no issues. So again, it uh, worked very well for me. Uh, again, I would recommend it this way. I would not try and haul meat with these connected to the outside of the bag. I did try that initially, so I left this strapped in here. Kind of like some of the other bags out there, I folded this down, I put the meat in, I brought this up and strapped it, but what I found was there's just too much sag with that connected here. The load eventually just keeps shifting down and down and it gets down to an area you really don't want it in. So to haul meat with that again, I would take the bag completely off, do your load swing here, and then I would just place the bag on top, cinch everything down tight. Once I did that, everything stayed in place really well. So while I'm here, this brings me to one of the things I would like to see Slumberjack change. I'd like to see him take this load sling, cut it off here, and sew it up higher. So it does work where it is, but you're relying 
strictly on the compression straps on the side to get that load up if you want it any higher than the bottom of the frame. I would like to see them simply cut this off and sew it on about three inches higher up the bag. That way you could kind of sag it down if you want it lower or you could pick it up if you want it higher. So not uncommon to see that, but I would like to see that change eventually. Uh, let's get this cleaned up here a little bit and we'll continue on. So again, I was super impressed with how well this carried weight. I think that 85 to 90 pounds is going to be about the limit for this bag. Honestly, I have seen some reviews online with these two aluminum stays bending and I don't doubt that. Um, but again, adequate for an elk quarter and some trim meat, and very few people should carry more weight than that anyway. You start pushing over that 90 pounds and you're really risking some significant injury. So, carry handle, I picked it up 85 pounds several times with this, no problems there, that was nice. Um, move these up quick. Load lifters worked well. I had no issues with these loosening up over time, which was nice. I was almost surprised at that, again, based on the price of the bag. But very good job. They bite in there well enough. I didn't have any straps come loose, and I didn't have anything break while testing this pack. So to adjust the torso height on this, which is nice, all you do is grab this Velcro here on the side, seal it up, tuck it behind. And you would do the exact same thing on that side. You can then just take this, slide it up or down to where you want it. And once you get it where you want it, you just pull this Velcro back over and attach that. Again, durable enough for me. I had 85 pounds on here, multiple days, multiple trips, multiple times, different angles. That never moved on me. I didn't hear any Velcro crinkling like it was moving. So no issues there. Uh, you can use these here to adjust where your load lifters pull off of the shoulder, which is nice. You can slide them up or down. I did notice with heavy weights, these did move a tiny bit, but not enough that I had to take the pack off or anything like that. So that worked well. Shoulder straps, a couple things I would like to see. Um, this is not specific to this pack. So the way these shoulder straps are set, they're not adjustable for width. For me personally, I would prefer them a little closer together. I have a couple rotator cuff injuries to my left shoulder. I'm very protective of that. And because of that, I can make sure I run my pack straps in off that rotator cuff, uh, which I did. So to get this where I needed it, I simply used a sternum strap. This is actually where I ran it, cranked almost all the way down. It's got a little bungee there. It's got a little tab here for your hydration hose, which is nice. But what I found was when I pulled these straps closer, which I needed to do uh, for my fit, the outside of these straps tipped up a little bit. So again, not a huge deal, um, but I would like to see them set closer with this really cranked down to get it right in the pocket there where I need it. It tips the outside edge of these straps up and it kind of puts more pressure on the inside of them. So that brings me to the other thing I would like to see with the shoulder straps. While they are adequate and I've certainly wore worse, I would like to see just a little more padding in the top half of these. So again, it wasn't horribly uncomfortable, but when you get that 85 pounds on and start banging down the trails for quite a while, I did get a little soreness. The load lifters did a good job of doing what they needed to do. And I think part of that issue again is because I ran these close and these outside edges were tipped because I needed them closer than they were. So a little more padding up in this area would be fine. And I understand that they maybe can't adjust the width of these because they probably set them to a standard generic size. So all in all good, you have plenty of adjustability here on the bottoms of these. They didn't even come close to needing more room than that. And another thing they did that I absolutely love that a lot of companies don't that you pay way more money for is they put the buckle on the padding. So a lot of companies will end the padding above the buckle and then these buckles dig into my fat man chest. I don't know why they do that. I find that very aggravating, but this one sits on the padding, which is super nice. I found that to be very comfortable. So hip belt moving on here. See if we can get some stuff out of the way. Uh, hip belt did surprisingly well. I have to admit, I was wondering how I would like that. I like a big beefy lumbar pad. I got a bigger gut than I do hips. So I need that to bite in, but this one actually did a very good job of staying up on my hips. This grippy certainly helps. Uh, they did a very nice job on that. I really like the feel and texture of that. If it was me personally, I would run that up at least halfway to about here. So uh, 
all in all, I've wore several packs. This one actually stayed up on my hips very well, all right? I didn't feel like I had to shrug it up every couple minutes like some of the packs I've worn. And again, for the price, extremely good job. But I would like to see them bring this black fabric up about halfway. It's going to be a little aggressive in a t-shirt. It's going to pull on your skin a little bit, but I could certainly live with that. And I think overall with different body types, that would help keep it up. As far as the padding on the hip belt itself, I found that to be adequate. I have no complaints about that. Uh, it was comfortable to wear, even at 80 plus pounds, I was pleasantly surprised. So I had no hot spots, no pinch points, no rub marks, no anything. This bag rode very well for me. It just, it fit me very well with the exception of the width of the shoulder straps. So the hip belt was very well executed. They did a nice job. One thing I need to note that's going to be extremely important is when I was running 85 pounds on here, I had these hip belts tightened down as tight as I could get them. So you need to know that if you're a small guy, so summertime right now I'm running about a 35 inch waistline. And at 35 inches I had these tightened up as far as they could possibly go. And that was just perfect for me. So you need to know that if you're a guy with a smaller waist than about 35 inches, this is probably not going to be the pack for you, okay? So with light weights, you don't notice it because you're not running the belt as tight. But you get above 80 pounds in here. And again, for me personally, with a 35-inch waist, I had both of those cranked down all the way to the buckle. That was a perfect fit for me, but there was not room for anything else. So with clothing on, that can change. Obviously, in the summer, I'm just hiking in lightweight shorts and a t-shirt. But just know that if you've got less than a 35 inch waist, this probably won't be the pack for you if you're gonna be hauling heavy weights in it. So, overall, what do I think of this bag or who is this bag for? This is an extremely good value. So they, they retail this bag at $300. I think this bag is worth every bit of that. I mean, it comes with your day pack, comes with the load sling built in, and it's just a very nice bag. Having said that, I would not pay $300 for it for the simple fact that you can get a Mystery Ranch pack on sale for about that $340 to $390. So I really like this bag. This bag is going to do what 95% of people want it to do. But durability wise with these aluminum stays, the Mystery Ranch bag is going to be light years ahead just in terms of long term dur durability with heavyweights. So. At $300, I think it's a good value, but I wouldn't pay that. I would find the money and I would step up into a mystery ranch at that point. Having said that, these bags generally sell for about $225. I've actually seen them as low as $200 lately. So if the absolute upper end of your budget is that $250 to $300 range, this is the bag for you. This is light years ahead of some of the other less expensive bags I've wore like Badlands or Alps or Tenzing as far as just comfort, fit, and weight. So phenomenally well designed and extremely good value. And if you can pick it up at 200 to $225, this bag is gonna do what you need it to do for many years. So I started out with the Badlands pack. It didn't take me long to realize that their 2200 is not a good mountain hunting pack. Despite the reviews and people saying it is, it's extremely poorly designed for that. It doesn't have the space. It weighs way too much. It has no lumbar pad whatsoever, and it just does not haul weight well at all. If I had started out with this bag, I think I would still be running this bag. So this bag is comfortable enough. It's well designed. It's well thought out. And this bag does everything that you would need a mountain hunting pack to do. Uh, like anything, there's definitely a point of diminishing return. You can certainly get a little more features or a little lighter weight bag, but you're going to pay a lot more money for it. So overall, very nice bag. Again, note that the hip belt will not fit with heavy loads below about a 35 inch waist, but it stayed up on the hips well. Shoulder straps were a little wide. Pulling them together tipped the edges up a little bit, but not a huge deal. Again, I hiked multiple times, multiple places, up and down hills, gardening with this on and nothing has given. The only other thing I noted that kind of felt a little strange to me, and it might be just because this is attached to a fabric point and not a frame, is with heavy weights, there seemed to be a little bit of stretch in here somewhere. Uh, not really an issue, it just kind of caught me off guard. I'm not used to that, but it did feel like a little bit of stretch in these st straps with heavy weights on there. So otherwise, 
very very nice bag again i know i keep saying that but i want to reiterate if your budget is that 250 dollar mark i have not found a bag anywhere that comes close to the comfort and doing what this bag can do in that price range so Overall, comparing this to high-end bags, this bag, in my opinion, gets about a seven and a half to an eight. Again, just because the frame's not gonna be as durable as some frames out there, and there are a few minor things. Having said that, as far as value, this bag is a 10. I mean, they hit a home run with this bag. It has a lifetime warranty. I don't doubt for a second that if something breaks or goes bad, they'll fix it. Just note, again, that this is not gonna be an extremely heavy hauling pack. I would not haul half an elk out in this, but, if for a guy that's up on a mule deer hunter that's going to pack out a quarter of an elk at a time, this bag is going to do everything you want it to do. Uh, it's going to do it in style. I've, it's just a very well designed, very well laid out bag. So look at the comments on the bottom. If I forgot something or if I misspoke, I'm going to make the corrections down there. Typically, I always mess up at least one thing, if not two. So again, very good bag for that $200, $225 price range of $300 your upper limit. I, I'm telling you straight up, in my opinion, this is the bag for you. If I had started with this bag, I highly doubt I would have upgraded. So very well done. If you have questions or comments, leave them down below. Hit the like and subscribe button so other people can find this review as well. And again, good luck hunting this year. I hope if you have this bag, you'll leave some comments below. Let me know what you like or don't like. If I misspoke or if I messed something up, let me know. So get in shape. Hunting season is just around the corner, gents.